So we're going to go through here on how to set up the M-Scope demo system in order to run a demonstration of the unit. Just the connections and how everything gets going through. Alright, what everything is. So this is the DUT, the, the, the demo DUT that we're going to use. This box here is the filter box that goes through and filters our DUT to show that passing afterwards. There is four positions. Zero is off. Position one is direct. Position two is full filter. Position three is CMC choke. And position four is just a um, comma mode capacitor. And there's a switch on both sides that they both have to be moved at the same time. All right, when you're switching. If you switch one, then it's gonna be a disconnection. All right, then we have the M scope. These front connections do are shipped um, disattached. Basically, I'll take one off here. So you wanna put both on at the same time, basically, and like that. And they're just connections to go from the internal listen to the receiver. So it gives you your uh, connections to the two receivers and the two outputs of the lizard. And they have to be snug. Make sure they're always snug. And we have on the back side, we have the power connection for the receiver portion and we have the power connection for the lizard and DUT. The big power cable with the bigger, big connection gets connected for the DUT and then the regular power connection for the receiver. Doing this one hand, so I gotta make them snug. All right, and then we plug these into power. Now, the listen can be connected straight to regular wall power. There is a possibility if they have a ground fault detection on that circuit that it will fault because all listen has is tied to ground um, and there's leakage. So if they have a ground fault detection, there could be a problem with the with the, um, the circuit tripping. Just keep it in mind. If not, try to try to find out a circuit that doesn't have it. Normally, I've had pretty good luck without having to deal with that. Um, just so you know. And as far as front connections go, so we have the listen output here for the DUT, so that we're gonna go through the filter box and then to the DUT or EUT. So we plug in the cable to the front. Again, very tough to do this with one hand. All right, connect that to the front of DT. And we take this and connect this to the back side of the filter box. And um, on the front side, it has a, a Shuko European plug style. So we plug that into the front. And we plug this into the DUT. All right. So now the DUT is hooked up. If you have power coming through, I don't have the power plugged in in the back yet. Here, let's get that plugged in. All right, we got the power plugged in. Once you have the power plugged in and you have your filter box on pass through, you should have your fan running. Um, there's no switching inside the M scope, so it's straight power through, through here. Um, if the switching obviously is um, off, then, then the, the fan will go off. If the switching is on, go through again. Both back and front need to match each other. All right, and that's how you hook up the system. And now you need to hook up your computer. So we have a fiber optic cable comes in a bag. And we have a USB to fiber adapter. The system also comes with 
an ethernet to fiber adapter which needs to be plugged in separately we don't typically use this but you can if you'd like to the, the usb one is much easier to use so we just take the fiber plug it in to the back and we take the other end of the fiber and that plugs into the usbs adapter and we have our PC here, which can be anyone's PC. Just set that on top here. And connect to the USB port. So there we got that connected. That's on there. Okay. We're going to plug in the receiver next and turn it on. Now... The receiver can be plugged in before this as well. That's not a I just have a power strip underneath here. Um, so then we're here and then we hit power on. And you have a green light in the front. So it takes about five minutes for this to boot up. We'll wait for that to come and boot up. And we'll come back and I'll show you how to start up. And control it with the PC. So once we have all three lights should be ready to go let's open up the computer and get it started and see all right all right to run the software we need a web browser so, so the web browser needs to be connected with this Um, prompt on the location and that is located right here as well on the front of the unit so you just put that and type that in to your browser and it should go once it is completely booted up so this is sometimes it takes a little while. Maybe the nope. so I just pulled out and put back in the uh, USB adapter. Let's make sure everything's plugged in all the way. Oh, see, I did not have the uh, fiber in all the way. So these are things that you can check if you have an issue. All right. Yeah, no, well. Search again, and there we go. So the fiber wasn't in all the way, and that was my problem. This is the screen that comes up. Um, you might, since I've run this before on this computer, it comes up in the way I left it. Um, so you might have, most likely it'll come up in a uh, dark mode, and you can change your device configuration from bright to dark, so we go to dark. And that's dark. We go back to bright. Depends on your what you prefer. You have different color schemes for your different traces here. Uh, you can change if you click on it. It's very easy to change your colors. So you have a pretty much an infinite color scheme you can choose. Um, you can run a self test. Um, you really don't need to do this at all you can save presets if you have multiple people using your computer or the computer and the system um, you might want to have different presets for different setups um, so you can you can save those and recall those but the most important thing of, of the demonstration here is you have your frequency ranges and your different um, 
selections here. Uh, 150 kilohertz or 30 megahertz is a standard setup for commercial testing. If someone's doing uh, military, then you can select the military bands. And then um, dual bands covers uh, two 9 kilohertz or 30 megahertz all together. Or 10 megahertz or 30 megahertz all together. Now the unit does also go up to 110 megahertz, but that can be used in a dual band. You can only use, put that separately. But normally we would just keep it at the 150 to 30 megahertz. That's the most common. We don't have to worry too much about the amplitude. Um, if we, we can show this for you. So you can change your reference level. That's basically what you're looking at here. Um, and the input attenuator is on an automatic. If by chance, if you use the, a, a DUT from a customer, maybe it has a high output, you might have to put in attenuation here if you get an overload uh, message. Um, let's keep that in mind. Trace configuration. This is the tab you will be using most often. This is, it gives you a lot of the measurement um, capability um, in this tab. All right. Each trace is a tab on top of the graph. So right now we are set for what to look at peak, and that's the purple. Green is quasi peak, and blue is average. And these are all lined the ground. We can also add another trace. So we hit the plus button, and we want to do say neutral to ground, quasi peak. And now that's there. Now it's pretty much right on top of the other trace. Um, so we really don't need that. So it's it's too much on the screen at one time. So it's easier just to see the three traces for a demonstration. But you can you can have up to six traces at one time. Then now we want to see this unit in modal measurement. So we really don't need two or three on um, traces, we can just de use two. So we can basically just turn the eyeball off for that trace and we can come over here and we'll change this to modal measurement. Just click on modal, common mode, and let's do quasi peak. And that's purple is quasi peak modal, common mode. We'll go to this one and we'll do differential mode, quasi peak. And now, so we have green is differential mode. So now you see the two differences between us. So the, the DUT is failing common mode. And now, if you wanted to show what happens to fix this, I'm going to have to use two hands to turn both switches or do one at a time. All right, so I'm going to just do that. So I switched to the full filter. So the full filter obviously passes the test now. But really, we only need a common mode filter. So we can go one more switch on both. All right, take a little time for it to react. Just the common mode filter also passes. Now, if we just go to the differential mode filter, which is a capacitor, which is the last position. All right. Now we're back to failing again. So that shows very quickly and very easily that we only needed the common mode choke. So if you look at the filters inside here, get a good look for you. This is the full filter. So it's got a comma mode um, choke and the capacitor, which is the red box. Over here is the comma mode choke only. And over here we have just the capacitor only. And that's the demo in a nutshell. Um, also you can show in the software is an analysis. Let's go back and show the full um, on neutral. That'd be average on this tab. No, I've been quasi peak. Let's go. This one was on the ground peak. And this one, turn it back on, is on the ground average. All right. So we have all three traces going again. And we can do analysis. Now analysis, we
we can come in here and do do a peak search. And you know, you put your cursor on top, you can see it. You add a new marker. Do a new marker. And right now we're, we're doing everything on average because that's the tab that's selected. So we can keep on adding markers to that as we want. If we want to do a report, we can actually have it find all these itself. In the report, you can put your information in here to go into the report. But with what we do is we select sub-ranges. Sub-ranges are breaking the frequency range into multiple things and gives the max of each sub-range. We usually make this a little bigger so it looks, it gives you a little more frequency. And we do list the maximum. So there we are, all this in the maximum. And we have all our failures in the, the sub-ranges that have the maximum listed in red. Oh, let me go all the way to the top here. So that's all the markers shown. And we can do a generate report. And there, here you, you can put a, a picture of your, your logo and all your information. Can also be entered here, um, but you have your graph and your your table of information. And then you can download it as a PDF. And then you can save that as well. You can save images, save graphs. You can output the data in a CVS. Um, one other thing is, is the limit lines. Um, sometimes when you first come in the first time, the limit lines might not be on. So you have to come in here and select. Okay, the best ones to select is the CISPR 32 Class B. That's um, household equipment. And you need to turn on the limit line by hitting the, the check mark. You have the customer has the ability to edit and create new ones of these limit lines as well. So they can um, bring them up and store new ones. Very easy to do. That's a demo in a nutshell. All right. It's very easy to use. Again, because it's so easy to use, you know, engineers or design engineers really don't need to be EMC experts to run this instrument. They can um, get moved going pretty fast and easy. Thanks.